Never to God for giving us this opportunity to look by accident and the ease of task that He has created for us. So we should be we should be grateful and and ask God to uh, increase our knowledge. So we should we should be we should be as I said. Uh, Grateful to the source of all of the blessings that we have. So by accident, uh, God has bestowed this favor upon us. This uh, favor is not uh, is not something that's because we are some kind of special uh, beings or something. This is this is total generosity and and, uh, and uh, kindness and love that God is is given us. So it's coming from the other way around. It's not because of us. So. Uh, we should we should uh, uh, go through this exercise and and uh, worship God alone and never uh, fail to, to do so because uh, failing to do so is going to to cause us a lot of grief. And so we have to we have to make sure that we understand it. Uh, as I said, uh, God is grateful for all the stuff that we do. Everything that we do in the cause of God, God is grateful. And so we also have to be grateful for, for the blessings that he's given us. And, uh, and so uh, this uh, favor that God has given us, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a huge mercy and kindness and love. And so we should be eternally uh, appreciative of, of this uh, huge blessing that we have. Um, <clears throat> so today what I wanted to, to discuss with you, I just wanted to go to chapter Chapter 89, I'm oh, sorry, 87. Uh, this chapter is, uh, this is a short chapter, has 19 verses. And so we're going to read it together. And Bismillah uh, ar Rahim. God said, glorify, glorify constantly the name of your Lord, the Exalted. So uh, this is, this surah, you see here, was the eighth surah that was revealed. So this is from the very beginning of our heart, revelation of our heart. So uh, God is telling us that glorify uh, constantly the name of your Lord, the exalted, the one who created, then balanced. So in this short, concise surah or chapter, God has given us so much information. It's amazing. It's amazing. We don't have this information right now. People do not have this information. The information that's contained in chapter 87, verse 2, is not, is not a information that people have. It says, He is the one who created, then balanced. So, the balance or the laws of the equation comes after the creation of the sky, is and the land. And the humans and everything that you see. It didn't happen the other way around. The laws were not there, and the creation did not have to obey those laws. This is the backward way that people think the things are supposed to be. Cosmologists think that if you have a Big Bang, the Big Bang has to obey certain laws. And this is not the case. That's a mistake. This is like saying that you have to stop the invention of automobiles because traffic laws are not there. That's, that's how ridiculous this idea is. So we don't have the information that's given to us 1,400 years ago. The one who created then balanced. So the laws of the equations came after the creation. See, the traffic laws came after the invention of the automobile. Okay. 
Then God says, He is the one who exactly measures, then guides it. Everything has exactly measured. And then guidance comes, and guidance comes only from God alone and no one else. Okay? Some people say that worry about their own kids. It's fine, okay? Worry about your own kids. But then if your own kids are going to grow up, they are going to be individual humans. And they're going to make their own decisions. They're going to make up their own minds. There's nothing you can do about it. It's God who's, who's, who's guiding every individual in this planet. So the guidance comes from God. And the one who brings the pasture, your, your provision comes from God. You know what happens to it? And it says that he turns it into dark, dead leaves. That's what happens. They wouldn't die. Action, when the fall comes, they wouldn't die. Okay, but God is the one who brought it out in the, in the first time. Then God says, We will recite to you, therefore, do not forget everything is in accordance with God's will. He indeed knows the obvious as well as the hidden. A lot of people are confused about this, okay? Well, it's according to God's will that we are doing bad things. So if we did not do bad things, it would be against God's will. It's not true. God has set up laws. Everything is according with God's laws. Be it spiritual or physical. You cannot get away from that. You know lying is bad. In spite of knowing that lying is bad, somebody goes there and lies. So you know that that wasn't God's will. Okay. And God says, after all of this, we'll make it easy for you. Therefore, keep on reminding, for the reminder may be, may be beneficial. So all that we can do is remind people what God has done for us. That we have to consistently and persistently and continuously glorify God as the first verse told us. And avoiding it is the, is the utmost evildoer. The evildoer goes, goes ahead and lies, steals, cheats, commits all kinds of vice. Although he or she knows that that is the wrong way of doing it. Okay, what would happen to this person? This is the one who will enter the great fire. Then he neither dies therein, nor stays alive. This is another state of existence that's indescribable. All we know are life and death. We have died once before. We don't remember it. God says you remember it after, after you go to heaven. You remember that first death, which wasn't very pleasant. Obviously. So God says, he neither dies therein, nor stays alive. Surely the success belongs to the one who gives the cleansing charity and commemorates the name of his Lord and observes the contact prayer. Okay. Insist upon doing your contact prayer. Be generous and give your charity. Do not forget that. So then what happens here is the following. And he says, God says, 
Yet if you prefer this worldly life, what the hereafter is far better and everlasting. We are impressed with this worldly life. We want the bigger portion of the pie for ourselves. We believe in zero sum game. Means that everything that you make comes to me. There's a there's a set portion and I want all of it. That's what the zero sum game is. Okay. God says the hereafter is, is far better and everlasting. That's what the real thing is, and that's what a worker should work for. Indeed, this is so recorded in the ancient scrolls, the scrolls of Abraham and Moses. So God is informing us that, look, this has already been there. This is not something new I'm telling you. These were in the previous scriptures. I've said this before. We miss all of these. When we read this chapter, we miss all of these. And God has given us all this information in there. It makes us more knowledgeable, makes us a better person, makes us somebody who really cares about God and knows who God is, that God is the one who teaches man what he does not know. Okay? It's not somebody else. It's not because you went to this school or that school that you learn. You learn because God taught you. Otherwise, you go to the best school and the wrong knowledge will come to you, which is fleeting. You're not correct. As I said, you go to the best school and you will be taught cosmology, and that cosmology is wrong. Because this cosmology assumes pre-existence of laws, which is the opposite of what the scripture is telling us. The scripture is telling us otherwise. See that? So scripture gives us information that does not exist amongst people. Okay? So this was so written also in the previous scriptures when people didn't pay attention. Because it's more than people were happy with the knowledge that they already had. And that knowledge was wrong, that knowledge was fleeting, because they learned it from another human being. Because God was, a, was not the source of that information. He tells us that he gave the prophets wisdom and knowledge. So what happened? Did they go to some big school, big name school, to gain that knowledge? Did they go to the best law school to have, to have wisdom? No. God is the one who gave them that, that knowledge, okay? God inspired that in them. God was the source of inspiration. God is the source of inspiration. Otherwise, a honeybee cannot make honey. This is what the scripture tells us, and that's what we know. And then when the two do not mesh, you know what we do? We use the right the scripture. Because according to our knowledge, our findings, our understanding, the scripture doesn't make any sense because so and so such and such scientist is telling us this, who's absolutely wrong. Why? Because we turn our back to God. God was teaching us. 
and we didn't care. So he tells us the same surah in the same chapter. Tells us about what how horrible hell is. So we either have a you know, the last, last week I was talking about surrounding. God surrounds everything. God is telling us in chapter uh, 186 that He is the one who is always near. God says that. He says, he says that when, when my servants ask you about me, tell them I'm always near. Then he tells us that he surrounds everything. Okay? So all of these things, and then God says that in the, in the hereafter, the, the unfaithful are going to be surrounded by hell. The same word has been used. Okay, that they are surrounded by hell. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the agony? That they were surrounded by God and they did all kinds of abomination right in front of God. And then when the time came, the thing that surrounded them was their own evil that manifests itself in, 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 the, in the form of hell. A manifestation of all the evils that we did in front of God is going to manifest itself in the form of hell. And that comes from every direction. Comes from the top, the bottom, the side, everyone. Completely surrounds it. And that's what God wanted us to see. He said, look, there you're going to have a different state of existence. And you don't know about it, it's extremely, extremely unpleasant. You're not, you're not alone, you're not dead. You're something else. So, according to the first verse, we have to constantly glorify the name of our Lord. The Most High. That's what we have to do. Commemorate the name of God frequently. That's what God says here, okay? This is, as I said, this is the beginning of the revelation of the Quran. And commemorate the name of His Lord and observe the contact prayer. Do your contact right. Do not forget to do that. Do your salat. And commemorate God. Think about God. God is the one who should occupy your minds. Not money, not your children, not this and the others. Not this worldly life, the politics, all kinds of stuff that goes on in here. God is the one who is supposed to be on your mind all the time. And you should be glorified. This is the essence of this, of this chapter. This is the essence of this chapter and what is God is telling us and how much information He gives us. And then, as I said, we completely ignore it. We go our own way, and as I said, when push comes to shove, and the two are colliding, the information that we have usually supersedes the information that God gives us in the world, and the directions that He sets for us. Usually the other one wins. I'm going to stop here.